it's getting a bit difficult because well, what we want to show you is, is more difficult while the time is much less. So we will guide you more through the process. This will, will more be a guided, uh, um, a guided walk through than, than really a, a full exercise. But I would like, what I would like to show is a, a, a rather new tool that we have developed to anchor uh, partial volumes to the um, big brain model. Um, and this tool is set up in a very similar way that the Atlas viewer is working that you have seen. So you do not download the big prey model on your computer to work with it because it's really huge data set, it's a, it is a terabyte in size. Uh, but instead you upload uh, your own image to a server and then you manipulate the, uh, um, the position of, of, of your volume uh, in the big brain space on, uh, online in a, in a web browser. Um, and this is, this is a quite new tool, so the currently uh, the version that you find online is a, a, um, has a rather simple set of, of functionality and it's not, as, not uh, yet been used by so many uh, users as you have it uh, for Quickney, which is already available for a longer time. So the, the principle is, we will soon have a look at it, you can actually um, Upload and uh, you can select from from some uh, example uh, volumetric data sets, but you can also upload your own image volume. This requires you to log in using uh, uh, an org ID, um, and um, what you then see is it looks very similar to the to the interactive Atlas viewer. It's basically using uh, many software components, many of the same software components, but you will then see the uploaded uh, uh, partial volume on top as an overlay on the, of the big brain. And the basic idea is that you just manipulate it there. So you can simply click it and move it around. You can rotate it using the shift button again, as, just as we did for, the, for navigating the big brain. Um, and you can also uh, do some, um, so there is also a dialogue to manipulate the translation and the scale and rotation, but you can just do it with the mouse immediately. And then there's a, a there is an advanced mode where, uh, where you can then add corresponding landmarks to refine the position. This will allow you then to, uh, um, to uh, apply an affine, uh, some affine components of, of, uh, of the, for the alignment, so introducing some shear in different directions. We will not uh, do this today because it requires uh, quite some, some expertise. For, for neuroanatomists it might be quite, uh, quite intuitive though. Um, yeah. The tool has an additional mode that, that can always be switched where you see the two volumes side by side. So in the default mode you see an overlay, but there's on, on the top left there's a button that you can always uh, switch to a side by side view, which in particular for adding landmarks is for many people more convenient. Um, and it has, a, it has an undo history browser, which is simply the third button, um, which actually shows all the manipulations that you have done and you can roll back in time, all, uh, all of those. You cannot jump around, but you can just sequentially roll back. Um, and as an output of the tool, what you can do is actually, you could, um, if, if the uh, uploaded volume was a, was a nifty file, you can download that nifty file with an, up, with an updated uh, affine matrix being embedded. But what you can also do is uh, open the result in the Atlas viewer, so that you have all the functionality that we have seen in the last session, uh, um, right at hand together with your own image data. So let's assume that you, that you upload a, um, whatever, you know, a, a, an image of, of, of the hippocampus. What we will do then you would be able to actually see the, the maps on top of it and also do spatial queries and, and so on in the Atlas viewer. And uh, a third possibility is you can submit it to the curation teams if you want to actually this, this data set to be released in, in the Human Brain Project to the public. Um, we will walk you through it with an example data set. Liuba will guide it here. Just one uh, um, mentioning of, of future directions. So we are currently implementing ways, since in the human brain, I, I, I told you in the beginning, you have this, uh, these massive differences between different subjects. We are now implementing mechanisms that will allow to also do nonlinear deformations. So there's already one, um, uh, function in development which is not yet released where if you have a, a cortical patch uh, uh, like a, th a 3D volume of, of a piece of cortex uh, and you have a segmentation of the cortex um, you can use that segmentation actually to normalize uh, um, the volume to the um, to correctly um, 
um, correctly project into the cortical depth of the big brain. So there's actually, it goes into the neuroanatomy, but there's a, there's a model of how the cortical depth is actually affected by curvature. And this model can be computed from a segmentation of the, of the uh, gray matter and of the cortex. And this is actually in the background applied so that you can then hit a button. Once you're almost at the right position, as you can see here, you can actually hit a button and then the deformation is computed, which matches as, uh, as well as possible the curvature and the cortical depth for normalization. This, this is not yet released, this is in development. Um, yeah, but let's give it a try. So here's, here's the, uh, the web address, vuluba.apps.hpp.eu. And uh, you, you, not, you don't need to log in. Um, there is an example data set that you can just use without logging in, and the Uber will. will still have to use the audio. I, yeah, yeah, do you? Maybe it's just cached on my machine. Did everybody see the, um, the yeah. URL long enough in order to type it in? Maybe you go back. Well, it's, it's also here. You see it still? We'll loop it. Let, me, let me just. Yeah, just. Thanks. So let's find a spot. That's not going to work. Oh. I don't have a oh, Yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah that's good. So is everybody on the website already? I hope uh, you saw the note that you all require an ORCID ID. Um, so you just have to authorize it. You're through that already? Talk to me. Hmm? Exactly. And then you select, uh, select over here the hippocampus part. It may take a little because it's, uh, yeah, it's just right. So if you have many concurrent requests, this is a really... Uh, just go through this now. So you already did lo log in with your orchid. It should work without anything. I think you can just press start and then you... You, you have to... Well, I think it was cached already. Just, just like this. Okay. Just, just go back in history. I'm trying to. Because start is not available right okay. now, so you have to go back, back. I would have just gone through it. So, um, I hope you see all that. So in my, in my case, when I traded with my laptop, it took a while until the data were loaded. Um, you can move around uh, individually the, um, the data yourself. Uh, and of course, you can also, again, move around uh, the sections. If you are within here and aim for the part, you can move around your, within your data sample. If you go to the brain again, then you move the whole big brain, so the space. Be a bit aware of this because if you adjust your, your data and then move into the wrong spot, you move the wrong sample and you don't want to do that once you adjusted everything. Um, so the first thing would be to see if, they're actually, if the data is actually in the right direction, in the right general direction. And I don't know if you maybe walked around a bit here and had a look at, at your data set then you may realize that it's um, rotated in the wrong direction. So I must say I'm not very anatomically experienced. I didn't see that on the first glance. So what you should do is you go over to the uh, transform incoming volume. So that's on the upper left corner, the top icon. Um, you press it and then you have actually here the possibility to already 
uh, rotate in the directions and what we should do, we should rotate it for 90 degrees in the x direction in order to get it in the rough correct rotation already. So everybody was able to find this? Okay. So what we now are doing is, so the opacity, I don't know if I think Timo didn't show that before, the opacity of or the transparency of the data set can be changed in the upper right corner. So you can turn that down in order to make it completely transparent. You can also turn it up and the best case is to have it first to realize what is actually in the data set, you turn the opacity completely up to 100%. Um, what you then should do is that in the lateral, you should search for the lateral end of the hippocampus within your data that you uploaded. So within your sections, please search for the lateral end of the hippocampus. I will try to do that as well, as far as I can. So you might have to switch between the windows a bit. Um, good in anatomy. <laughs> I think that's fine, right? Roughly at least. So it look, <laughs> should look somehow like this. I think uh, some of you have more experience in, um, in actually adjusting it. So you see here in the lateral view, in the lateral window, somehow here the edge of the, the hippocampus. And if we now move, the, move out our data set, so you just move it to the side, um, we can search in our space actually roughly the same spot of the hippocampus. So tre please try to find the lateral one in here as well. This happened to me the last time too. Now this is again, yeah, you see. Um, it's hard to see it here. <coughs> what do you think? Roughly correct? Yes. I think it's fine. Um, and then you can move your, your area back here. So I have to readjust. I hope this didn't happen to you. I don't know why this happened. I mean, this is in general, it's a, it's a really difficult task to, to align 3D with 3D visually. Yeah, you don't it do that in half an hour. Uh, it's, it requires a neuroanatomical background and really some, uh, some practice. So even thinking when we did it for this data set the first time with, with a new anatomist, it still took some time. Yeah, yeah. let's say an hour until we got it right. So, it's so if we search a bit the opacity again, you see that of course our data set is much too large on the one hand, and on the other hand, it's still it's just in a 90 degree angle, and it should be tilted again. So what we want to do, if we want to change this, we go back to the transform incoming volume, and then we go to rotation first. And we could adjust the x-axis a bit, for example, to, um, to 60 degrees. Yeah. I don't know. It's searching. I don't want to search. <laughs> so I'm going to do 
60. I wanted to do 60. Thank you. Yeah, so this is our volume and you see that it, it's tilted a bit. Um, and it kind of roughly matches, if I turn off the opacity, the tilt of, of the brain here. Um, and then what I want to do is I would like to adjust the scale. And you can do this here. And then you want to do it smaller, so you just go down and the rough part should be around maybe 94 or a bit less. You can play around a bit and try then to adjust your brain. So not your, you're now touching not your, your data anymore, but you're adjusting the space to the right position. Um, I think I have to deselect that first. In order to calculate. So the next step would be, so now we have the rough direction, we have the rough position of it. Um, the next step would be then what Timo showed in the slides very quickly. Um, as you go into details, you select certain landmarks, like for example, the anterior and posterior end of the hippocampus, and then you start realigning, doing the fine tuning based on the landmarks. Um, if you want to, you could try and play around with this in the, in the last 15 minutes or just play around with the data set itself, try to readjust it better than I did, <laughs> uh, which I think is not that difficult, um, and see if you can maybe figure out some, some spots where you can set some landmarks. Maybe just to, maybe you can just show the other functionalities. So ah, yeah, the landmark. So there's the, the landmark editor is here. Uh, so here you can, can add landmark. You can save the list of landmark and restore it. Then here is the undo uh, history. Yeah. So we can, as long as we don't do anything, we can even now, you can go backwards and see what you have done and you can go forward again. The red one would take you all the way back yeah. to reloading the data. It's asking though, before doing it. And then there is the possibility to, to actually save a JSON file with the FI matrix to, to see your result in the Atlas viewer. Um, and uh, this is yet grayed out, but, but soon you will be able to submit this into the curation process. So if you say, okay, yes, my data set is already uploaded, I have already worked a little bit on the positioning, and then you can submit it to curation teams and they will, they will uh, uh, support you in, in, in releasing the data on the platform. So question for you then, if mm -hmm. someone comes in and does this then, does it spit out a file where you can get then the map of the coordinate space of the original volume to MNI space? Mm -hmm. Sorry, so that you download it, you mean you download a nifty file in MNI space? I'm just wondering what coordinates you can get out. So you had your original 3D file yeah. and then um, can you map it to this and then also get the mapping to MNI? Hmm. I know this is mapped to the big brain. Mm -hmm. But the, the big brain, brain is presumably also mapped to an MNI. Yes, system. yes. So right. it's, uh, it is like how you work with all these transformations in practice if you take it to your own machine. That's a, that's a difficult issue. Um, in the system, this is, this is exactly one. So if once you're in the big brain space, we're in a system, we have stored transformations from big brain uh, to the MNI spaces mm -hmm. that, that you can use. This is currently not connected yet to this workflow, so it's, um, but that, that is something that the system will, will provide. Okay. So the, the, the difficult problem is um, how to properly communicate this, because if you, in the human brain, if you go from the big brain to MNI, there are different choices of how you compute these transformations, with, which can have really different, uh, um, different results. You know? What we are currently doing is mostly a, um, a nonlinear deformation that takes into account uh, cycle constraints. But this is not for everybody and every, every experiment what you exactly want. So I th the difficult part here is really how you, know, how you properly document this uh, to, uh, to the user, th these mappings. For, for this part that we have done now, it is quite transparent, you know, you, you know yourself what you have done and this is a simple scheme, it can, it can be documented with the exact steps and so on. But as soon as you go into nonlinear projections across the template spaces, it's, we have them, but we are currently thinking about what is the proper way to actually communicate this with the user and document it, you know.
but that's the idea, yes. And it's, this is currently the this is a very fresh release. It just has the big point as default reference space, but it's it will be very simple to just put the M and I reference space there so that you can already directly say directly I want yeah, that's that is just a, a switch on our side. We haven't done it yet. Mm -hmm. So right now you don't have something similar for Mosprey, or is it idea to do? Well, there is uh, there is the landmark rec tool, which is also for volumes. But uh, so on on details, I think one of you could maybe yeah. refer a bit more on it. And this is just possible here, so it's it, it's just we, we don't have a selector for selecting the mouse frame yet, mm -hmm. but it's just there's basically nothing we would have to do. It's just you you, you could simply switch to the mouse frame and use the tool. There's no. nothing. Mm -hmm. It's just that the first release we, we only provide the big frame, but it's then it's nothing speaking against extending it. Yeah, yeah. So you can integrate uh, Ellen. MRNA Atlas, and then you can fit more 3D space into the whole element. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the point is actually, we, this has been mostly written uh, with the big brain in mind, because there you have this particular problem that it is very, very difficult to download the target data set to your own machine. And the, it's and huge. The, you know, there, mm -hmm. like you, you have some, interactive uh, alignment, there are interactive alignment tools that you can install in your computer available, but they wouldn't support such a big reference volume. Yes. You know? So that is that is why, why we primarily build it. And if you go to the mouse frame, it's there there are ways to do it on your local machine as well. Mm -hmm. But it's we, we it's we, it's supported here. It's just that you cannot select it yet. 